This is Mr. Takovic. Oh, please. Mr. Takovic was my father. Call me Gene. Hey guys, Kiwi here, warning spoilers for Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul up to Season 6, Episode 10. In this video, I'll be breaking down and reviewing Episode 610. Like the video if you end up enjoying it, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter for more Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad updates. With that being said, let's jump into the breakdown. So this episode begins with the reveal of Carol Burnett playing Marion as she shops for groceries. We instantly get a feel for her character as she stubbornly doesn't want to accept help grabbing a can from a top shelf, along with being picky about sharp cheddar. Extra sharp Wisconsin cheddar. Ooh. You can keep it Wisconsin. Ooh. Fun fact, the brand of cheese she tries out is Schnoz Farms, which has got to be a reference to Tom Schnoz, one of the main creators of the show. As she rides home in her electric chair, she has trouble getting up one of the curbs. Enter Jean, who's putting up flyers for a missing dog called Nippy, which the episode is named after. Fun fact, you can actually call the number on the Nippy poster in real life and hear another Breaking Bad Better Call Saul voicemail easter egg, something which I'll eventually cover on the channel in depth once I get back to an already existing series I have on my channel where I call all the Breaking bad Better Call Saul phone numbers. Gene explains that his dog jumped out of a window while parked and that he hasn't seen Nippy since. This is just an elaborate ruse to start talking to Marion and I assume that Gene packed the snow up on the curb so that she'd get stuck there as well. I just wonder how long he's been staking her out along with Jeff in order to know what her route is. Marion reluctantly accepts help from Gene. As he goes to help her up the curb, he snips a wire to her electric chair and turns a switch causing it to shut off entirely. We then see Gene push Marion home and the show cuts to the intro sequence, now showing that the VHS tape has either run out, broken, or is being recorded over, as we see REC in the top corner. Normally this is all the Gene we'd get for a Gene scene, but episode 610 is actually our first ever long-awaited full Gene episode. After the intro sequence, we see Jeff in his cab arriving at his house, now played by a new actor. The shot showing the Albuquerque isotope air freshener along with seeing Jeff look in his rearview mirror is probably intended to acclimate viewers to the new actor, since it's the exact same shot from the season 4 Gene scene. As Jeff arrives home in his cab, he's surprised to see Gene at his home with his mother, who's revealed to be Marion. Marion introduces Gene to Jeff as Mr. Takovic, to which Gene says, Mr. Takovic was my father, please call me Gene. This is such a hilarious BS line, since Gene is obviously a fake alias and Jeff knows this. I love how Gene and Marion are finishing each other's sentences, with Gene and Marion already seeming like best friends. As we know, Jimmy's always had a way with elders, with this reminding me a lot of the earlier Better Call all seasons with Jimmy working in Elder Law. Actually, this whole episode feels like it's reminiscent of early Better Call Saul seasons, which I really enjoy, as this episode is a return to form, giving us a soft reboot for the Gene timeline after the Better Call Saul timeline concluded in episode 609. Gene pretends that this is his first time meeting Jeff, as Jeff plays along due to being just so stunned at the entire situation. Gene has done a great job checkmating Jeff here by intruding on his home life and befriending his mother. Jeff seems like a bit of a mama's boy here with Mary and Colin him Jeffy along with speaking for him, saying that sometimes he gets shy around new people, along with the fact that Jeff is even living with his mother in general, which we actually learn why near the end of the episode. To keep up the ruse, Gene pretends like he didn't know that Jeff was a cab driver, or the story about Jeff having Sammy Hagar in his cab once. So, your mom tells me you're a cab driver? Have you ever driven anyone famous? As Gene grabs food out of the oven, the timer sounds a lot like Hector's bell, which has got to be intentional. I don't think it has any greater significance, but it's a nice touch. Later that night, Jeff confronts Gene while he takes out the trash. I love the line of Gene saying, I know, it's awkward, right? But you don't have to call me dad, yet. This may be in reference to the fact that apparently the creators were going to have a sister character in 610 that Gene hit on, but they found it unnecessary, so they combined the sister and mother characters into one, being Marion. I know it's awkward, right? But you don't have to call me dad. Yet. Jeff says that all he has to do is call the cops, but Gene calls him out for not doing so yet, as Jeff wants in the game. I love how Gene calls it this, since characters such as Nacho and Mike would always say this to Jimmy in the past. When Gene goes home, he pours himself a glass of booze and takes out Marco's ring from his iconic shoebox filled with mementos from his former life while listening to a police radio to see if Jeff actually does call him or not. I love the symbolism of Gene putting on Marco's ring, showing that he's not just turning back into Saul Goodman, but Jimmy McGill, or rather, Slip 
flipping Jimmy. The next day, we see Gene at the end of his shift, throwing out the trash with the exact same shots as the Season 2 Gene scene. We then see Gene go introduce himself to the mall cops, bringing them Cinnabons as thanks for calling the paramedics on him. This of course is a complete lie just for Gene to get close to the mall cops watching over the security cameras as Gene hated getting wheeled out by the paramedics along with going to the hospital. This is because Gene's trying to live a normal life and hide in plain sight, remaining invisible. Gene going to the hospital put all eyes in the mall on him, along with having to put his info into the hospital system which almost got him caught. I love how the younger mall cop Nick is actually the same mall cop from the season 3 Gene scene with him saying I remember you, along with quoting the get a lawyer line that Gene yelled out to the thief that they arrested in season 3. Get a lawyer! Get a lawyer! Nick actually does an amazing Gene impression while mocking him here and it gets me every time. We then see Gene time the other mall cop Frank, played by Jim O'Hare, while he methodically eats his Cinnabon with a fork and knife. For those of you who have already seen my 610 Gene easter egg video, I'll save you from having to listen to another ASMR montage as much as I want to edit it in here as well and even double it, but I gotta reiterate how much Frank eating the Cinnabon bothers me. I hear every cut, chew, lip smack, swallow, and old man noise throughout not only this scene, but the following montage as well. I do enjoy ASMR, but eating and chewing ASMR is not one of them. As much as it bothers me, it bothers me in a good way, since I do appreciate the creators doing this. I never thought that watching a mall cop eat a Cinnabon would be so intense, but here we are. Now throughout the next few days, we get a montage showing Gene bringing the mall cop Cinnabons after every shift, while Gene secretly times him eating the Cinnabon every visit in order to find the average time that it takes him to finish one. While doing so, Gene pretends to be interested in Nebraska sports, even doing research on the topic in order to have things to say about it during future visits. According to other viewers who actually know something about sports, these conversations between Gene and Frank imply that this is happening sometime in October of 2010. I also love how the Gene montage in this episode is very reminiscent of classic Jimmy McGill conning montages. Normally a Gene montage has old 40s to 60s music while showing Gene go about his day-to-day -day life but this montage of Gene forming a scheme to distract the mall cops is very reminiscent of early Better Call Saul Slip and Jimmy montages, such as the Season 2 montage during the episode Inflatable, where Jimmy starts wearing flashy suits to purposely get fired from Davis and Maine, and that's obviously the origins of his Saul Goodman suits. The montage song has many layers to it, as it's actually a song from Mission Impossible called Jim on the Move by Lalo Sheffron. Not only does the name of the song Jim on the Move relate so well to Jimmy slash Gene in this episode, but the songwriter Lalo Lalo Chevron, sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, is actually what inspired the name Lalo Salamanca before Lalo was even confirmed as a Salamanca way back when the Breaking Bad It Wasn't Me It Was Ignacio Lalo Didn't Send You lines were written in the iconic scene of Walt and Jesse kidnapping Saul during Saul's first ever episode in Breaking Bad Season 2 Episode 8. After the montage, we see Gene mapping out floor plans to a department store within the mall for his heist that he plans training Jeff to do. Fun fact, they did shoot all of this in the actual real-life Conwood Mall where the Cinnabon store is actually located, but the department store was created just for the episode. No clothing store would let them film in their stores, so they had to use a vacant spot in the mall that was empty due to a store having closed down. This means that everything in this department store from the episode was created specifically for the episode. We then see Gene coaching Jeff on the heist, with Jeff practicing out in a field where they have recreated the layout of the department store. This is such a comedic moment to see Jeff running around like a chicken with its head cut off. What's not funny however, is the fact that Pat Healy actually did this scene so many times that he actually almost passed out and required oxygen and to be sent home for the day due to running around so much at such a high altitude. Anyways, Jeff questions the logistics of the heist as he starts to get cold feet. Gene motivates him by implying that he knows how to coach people into making a boatload of money, referencing how with his help, Walt went from being a broke high school chemistry teacher to having a pile of money the size of a Volkswagen. Although that may be true, Gene purposely left out all the negatives that came along with it, such as all the death and murder along the way and the fact that Walt lost his family and also died at the end of it, unable to actually spend his money along with his family not wanting it. Jeff's friend, called a Buddy, says that he'll do the heist, to which Jeff finally agrees that he's in and they go back to training. I love the rhymes that Gene came up with in order for Jeff to remember what to steal, and there's apparently 20 rhymes and items in total. We're meant to suspend our disbelief in regards to Jeff actually being able to accomplish this heist in the three and a half minutes that it takes for Frank to eat the Cinnabon, since while filming it actually took Pat Healy around 12 minutes to do the full thing. 
We then see Jeff smuggled into the department store with a shipping crate, with his friend Buddy as a delivery man. The store manager complains that they never ordered sprayer pumps. She calls Buddy's supervisor with the number turning out to be Gene's cell phone. He answers the call in the back of the Cinnabon and convinces the store manager to allow the crate to stay there overnight and to be picked up in the morning. This is because Gene lies, saying that Buddy has to pick up a huge shipment of mackerel fish from the airport, so he'll have no room in his truck for the crate. Gene also suggests driving to the mall himself to pick it up, but he says it'll take four hours. He knows that the mall is closing and that the manager will decline waiting the four hours. The reason why they want the shipping crate to stay there overnight and be picked up in the morning is so that Jeff can throw all the stolen clothes into the crate with Buddy picking it up in the morning after the heist is done. After Gene successfully talks the manager into agreeing to do this, we see Gene do a silent It's Showtime, folks, which is a great callback to the first season when Jimmy would always say this to himself in the courthouse bathroom right before going into court for pro bono cases. Moving on to the heist, we see Jeff sneak out of the shipping crate once Gene texts him the all clear signal, along with Jeff reciting the rhymes that Gene told him in order to memorize what to steal. I love how when Jeff is on number 6, we cut to Frank and Gene saying 6,000 seats in regards to a sports game. Five Patagonias to survive. 6,000 more seats. 6,000 more fans. It's a great transition. Also, right as Jeff is past number 12, we see how Frank is exactly halfway through his Cinnabon, meaning that Jeff has 50% of his time left. Gene even secretly checks his stopwatch to double check. Since I love the rhymes that Gene came up with so much, I want to take a moment to go over every single one that we heard in the episode. 1. Armani suits and run. 2. Air Jordan shoes for you. 3. Linen shirts for free. 4. Cashmere sweaters out the door. 5. Panic to survive. Six, swanky sweatsuits to the mix. Seven, spendy dresses sent from heaven. We don't hear what eight was, but we do hear nine, pricey lingerie is mine. Ten, calfskin briefcases for men. We don't hear eleven either, but we hear twelve, luxury pumps to unshelve. Then we miss thirteen to seventeen, but we hear eighteen, Kate Spade is queen. Nineteen, Calvin Leathers on the scene. 20. Uggs look funny. Now just as Jeff is on the home run, he does a comedic slip and fall, startling Gene who chokes on his coffee. Gene then has to stall for time, hoping that Jeff will eventually wake up and finish the job. Gene has a fake mental breakdown as a distraction, and this isn't the first time that we've seen him do this on the show. Jimmy did this back during episode 307, Expenses, while messing with Chuck's insurance, along with episode 410, while talking about Chuck to be reinstated at the bar hearing. Jimmy isn't the only one to use this tactic either, as we saw Walt do the same thing in Breaking Bad Season 5, Episode 5, in order to get Hank to leave his office so that he can plant a bug. Also, during Gene's fake mental breakdown, it becomes somewhat real as Gene pulls from real-life events in order to continue this distraction. He talks about his dead parents, along with even Chuck, to which he pauses for a moment while saying so. Although Gene is exaggerating his depression, it's true that he has nothing and no one. He really does have no family, along with no friends due to being on the run with an alias. It's true that if he died, he'd be forgotten and replaced placed at his job. I just find it interesting how this fake mental breakdown becomes somewhat real. Also, we get a comedic moment when Frank almost turns around to see Jeff knocked out on the cameras. Gene literally says, oh, look at me, just grasping for straws on what to say. <laughs> look at me. I don't know. I, I don't know. Finally, Jeff wakes up, scrambles to grab his stolen goods, and rushes back to the shipping crate to store them. Since the crate is full, Jeff is forced to hide in the bathroom all night long until the mall opens in the morning. Once the mall opens, Jeff not so casually walks out, pretends to look at clothes, and leaves satisfied that he wasn't suspected. Fun fact, this is the first scene that Pat Healy ever did as Jeff, and the director of the episode, Michelle McLaren, told him to walk in this scene as if he had hemorrhoids, which is why he walks so awkwardly out of the bathroom. We then see Jeff, Buddy, and Gene back at Jeff's house with the shipping crate full of stolen goods. As Jeff and Buddy bask in the glow, Gene cuts their celebration short by listing off all the crimes that they just committed, saying, how it adds up to 30 plus years of prison time. This reminds me a lot of when Jimmy threatened to sue his community service supervisor in season 3, listening off all the things he'd sue him for. Now Jeff acts confused, not taking Gene seriously at first, as he thought they were now allies. Here we get the monologue of Gene telling them that they're not friends and to stay away from him 
now that he has dirt on them, calling it mutually assured destruction. Here we find out that this was Gene's true plan all along, to take Jeff under his wing with the presumption that he's just coaching Jeff on how to pull off scams, when really he's entrapping Jeff and his friend into doing crime so that he can blackmail them for it. I feel like this is a good time to mention how I feel about the way the new actor is portraying Jeff. In previous Gene scenes, the old Jeff, played by Don Harvey, felt way more sinister and malicious, while this new Jeff, played by Pat Healy, is way more goofy and silly and even more sympathetic in my eyes. The new Jeff is way less intimidating and feels like a bumbling buffoon. Although I miss the old Jeff and I constantly wonder what this episode would be like with him, I honestly love the new Jeff. I never thought I'd say this, but I actually feel bad for Jeff in this episode as he just wanted Gene to be his friend and appreciated Gene coaching him in the department store heist. Throughout the episode, Pat Healy does an amazing job as Jeff and I've really warmed up to him playing Jeff after multiple rewatches of this episode. And you gotta keep in mind, we've now seen more screen time of Pat Healy playing Jeff than we ever did as Don Harvey playing Jeff. I just really like the new Jeff, from his surprise to find Gene in the kitchen with his mother, to practicing and executing the heist, along with feeling bad for him at the end of the episode when Gene blackmails him. We then have Marion arrive home and greet them in the shed due to seeing Gene's car in the driveway. Just when you think they're gonna get caught with the stolen goods, they cover it up by Gene pretending to help them work on a car engine. Gene implies that he should leave, but Marion asks him to join her inside along with helping her bring in the groceries. Here we find out the reason why Jeff is even living with his mother, because he ran with a bad crowd in Albuquerque and got himself into trouble, causing him to move back home with Marion. Marion calls Gene a good influence on Jeff, which couldn't be further from the truth as Gene has taught Jeff how to successfully pull off criminal schemes and cons. However, Gene is actually a good influence on Marion herself, who's now happy to ask for help with things such as bringing in the groceries, when at the beginning of the episode we were shown multiple examples of her being reluctant to ask for help. The final scene of the episode shows Gene walking around the department store and picking out a flashy shirt and tie to hold up to himself in front of a mirror. This symbolizes many things and is up to viewer interpretation. He's reminiscing about the flashy Saul Goodman clothes that he used to wear, seemingly proud that he's still got it in regards to pulling off a successful scheme. The pattern on the shirt that Gene grabs looks a lot like the shirt that Jimmy wears in the season 1 finale when Marco dies, which implies that Gene is not only reminiscing over Saul Goodman but slipping Jimmy as a whole. Now I think that they had to choose a shirt with a crazy pattern since this is in black and white, having just one solid color even if it's like bright neon pink, it would just show up as a shade of grey, so that's why this shirt has such a crazy pattern on it. Now the final shot of the episode shows Gene leaving the shirt and tie on a rack of clothes, walking away and leaving it behind. Again, this can be interpreted in many ways. Is Gene implying that he's leaving the Saul Goodman slip and Jimmy lifestyle behind, or is he just implying that he doesn't need the flashy clothing in order to pull off schemes whenever he so chooses? He could also just be leaving it behind due to still needing to stay in hiding as Gene, unable to draw attention to himself, which is the exact opposite purpose that the flashy clothes cause. This episode gets a strong A tier. Although some may find this episode boring or call it filler, I beg to differ. This episode shows more Gene than we've ever seen and in a great way. Also, the creators purposely wanted to jump into the Gene timeline right after episode 609 to subvert expectations as they knew that we'd think that after 609 ending with the Saul Goodman time skip, we'd be seeing the Breaking Bad timeline in 610. So instead of showing us Breaking Bad in 610, they showed us their first ever black and white Gene episode instead. Some people keep thinking that Better Call Saul is going to turn into Breaking Bad, but that's not what this show is. Breaking Bad was always on a grander scale with higher stakes, while Better Call Saul is more of a down-to-earth and relatable character study. Plus, this return to form in this episode matches perfectly with Gene's day-to-day -day boring life. We still see him take on the threat of Jeff in his own way, but it makes sense that we'd see him in a more grounded situation doing a small-time heist with Jeff, along with distracting the mall cop from the security footage. Now, although I love episodes 609 and 610, they just don't quite match up to the shocking and intense situations that episodes such as 603 or 607 had. As I said in the episode 609 review, although I'm giving 609 and 610 an A tier, that's only because I haven't introduced the double S tier into my reviews yet. Once I do my full season 6 tier list, I'll be incorporating the double S tier rank and re-ranking the season 6 episodes in a way where episodes such as 603 and 607 will probably be bumped up to double S tier, leaving room for episodes like 609 and 610 to be bumped up to single S tier as well. So look out for that on the channel, it'll come soon after season 6 ends. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today, and if you're new to the channel and just haven't yet already, subscribe and hit the bell notification to stay updated on when I post new content on Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Check out my Patreon and give a super thanks to help support the channel financially, but most importantly 
yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Yeah, I remember you. Get a lawyer!